It's just like. All right, we're officially live. Woo, woo. We're the best behaved group ever, right, y'all? <laughs> yeah, awesome. All right, guys, so we're lucky enough to have this shift in order represented by the president of the company, Mark King, and then Lisa Negros, our, our head of industry. So I'm gonna best deliver it as best as they could. Um, it's kind of a talking that's have energy in the room, especially if you're at Power Union. Who, who's able to go in this room? A few of them, Manny. That, that energy is hard to replicate. But our goal is to bring you guys as much info as possible that we learn from international and stats that are happening in the community. Shift into Overthrive, the next slide together by the C is that we're gonna just we're gonna give you guys feedback. Um, they spoke to as you guys know Gary Keller holds hosts a mastermind monthly with the top 150. It's kind of expanded to like the top 150, and now he has even like the top, I think, 300 that we every once in a while. But it's very exclusive to get to that 100 people mastermind. And those are the people that he interviewed. So a lot of the slides that we're going to go over, they ask them, what are your lead sources? How are you getting your leads? What do you guys do when you get open house? So we have actual data that they pulled from interviewing all the stuff on here. Pretty cool stuff. All right. All right, let's get into it. Perfect. All right, so these are some three major objections, right? Here's on follow on. So seller, one thing that they're hearing is, why would I trade a low interest rate for a high interest rate? Not really? Yep. Sounds familiar, right? Why would I trade one, right? What are you guys usually saying about that? What do you guys say to that? It's participation today, guys. I'm glad we have some people in the crowd that say that. What do you say to why would I trade a low interest rate for a high interest rate? Everybody's needs are different. So it's just going to depend on what their needs are. What is their motivation? You go back to motivation. Oh, motivation, yeah. Always. So, hey, like, you would say, well, hey, you wanted to relocate because of the school district, right? Let's go back to that, that why. You have to get them back. You don't want to leave your kids in this bad school, Jacob. You scare cats. But hey, but, 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 but <laughs> interest rates are always everything. So if you go to a cheaper home, does it really affect it at all? Not really. You're paying less. Then the you have to ask them, what did you call me? So you go back into it. Go steer them back, face your next elevation, right? So the buyers are here, should I buy because what well, should I wait to buy because what could I buy today would be worth less tomorrow? You know what I'm talking about? They think that the market's gonna crash though. So people are very convinced that they're gonna wait to see. Typical stuff, right? Yeah. And friend, well I don't know, I follow this conspiracy theorist on YouTube and he said the government is gonna collapse in two weeks. That was supposed to happen mid-March. Remember? Yes, well, no, I had a crazy seller that walked into my open house mm -hmm. and he said, I'll pay cash for this property. And he, he was very well-spoken, very articulate, very impressive. Mm -hmm. He turned out to be really not all there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was talking about getting money, getting money from the fifth dimension. Oh, that's coming in because you know our government is just I mean they're gonna take over oh, and Jesus so Christ is coming so taking over everything and then only the few selected if I wanted to join them but anyway that was different yeah. I almost thought of doing it join them <laughs> just to see what's on the side no but you guys that's really great and you know what that brings up a great point people are not aware now no they're not uh, I mean, I'm not say that before I camera you know what? I'm gonna take a step back. You know what? <laughs> but like, yeah, the thing is that they need to be educated, guys. Um, I, I love these slides. Like these really rock my world. They changed my whole life going through these slides because so many points are made and we've basically simplified it. But not everyone's all there. People are stressed out. Um, I being locked away for years. It's been years. Has really done damage to a lot of people mentally. So it's really up to us right now. I feel like a lot of us are psychologists and psychiatrists right now. We're like people's therapists more than ever. And those of us that have never been like really uh, good at touching our databases, you have to adjust at that, right? All the way to change the way they approach their businesses, come contribution, invite them to events and stuff like that. So it's our job to educate people because they're they're afraid. And a big thing about that we're gonna touch on is that the way they get their information has changed. That's the biggest thing. It's not that the market's bad, it's the way that they receive their information streams. They're quick to get on their phones, a TikTok video. I saw this TikTok, I said, this is going to happen in the market. I saw, oh, I watched a YouTube video the other day. 
all the news said this, right? Yeah. So the way that people receive information, do you guys agree it's all technology based now? Yes. Do you agree they're Googling, they're going through Reddit or 4 the Reddit pages and reading all this crazy stuff, right? And they think they know more than you at certain points. <laughs> they had a, had a seller that said that he said sport knew more than me. And I was like, okay, shoot. <laughs> all right, guys, so going back into this, remind me of the economic model. The economic model is one of the first models in the MREA, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. Um, this is a fun activity. So Bailey's going to go through the example that he put up there for you guys. Here is the example that's making a million dollars. Who wants to make a million? Who, who has that goal? Who wants to make a million dollars one year in real estate? Like, that's what I, you're here for. Right? This year. is literally science. This is the mathematical breakdown of what's going to Absolutely. So, yeah, here it is. This is what it's going to take. Uh, essentially, you're going to have to sell 250 units. And in order to sell those 250 units, you're going to have to go on about 300 listing appointments and about 300 buyer's appointments. So how many of you feel like you can do that all on your own? Yeah. Christina's like maybe over there trying to do it. I don't know, maybe somebody's all doing it. 20 hour work then. I don't know, I don't know. 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 But that's like the math behind it. 250 units will get you a million dollars in real estate. Depending on the price, right? Well, this is based off of our uh, market. So based off of our cost of sale in this area, then that this is what it takes. And we went on the high end, actually. So we went, that went on the higher end. 10,000 commission, yeah. Yeah. So we went on a little bit of higher price point, just in case we're going to higher price points. We saw a ten thousand dollar commission. So it could change because the basic uh, commission that we run through our office is twelve grand, right? That's the average one. So it is going up. That's pretty much what it takes to convert. I like seeing it because it's kind of how many of you guys get crazy that big number? It's like, well, I don't know. I want to make a million dollars, but that's a lot of houses sold, right? The two things that you're going to need are more time and more money, so that's why we're here today. Yeah. So why are we teaching Chef and Drive? We want to help you guys make more money and give you more time. Who wants that? You do. He's yes. like, so I'm going to show you. But you guys, um, that's the biggest thing. Even when I talk to agents that are not with us, and I'm always asking them two questions. Is what do they need more time with? What do they need more of? Time, money, or leverage. It's always the three things that real to struggle with, and we all lose our minds over it and try to figure out why we're not happy or why things are not working out for us or why am I depressed this week or that's what we get this next month. It all goes into I need more time or I need to make money. Yeah. That's then, at the end of the day, yeah. right? And then what do you need for more money? What do you need to get more money? What do you think your business needs for you to get more money? What do you need more of? Transactions, more business. Yeah. More business. How do we get the business the transactions? How do we get those appointments? How do we get them? Prospecting. Lead generation, yeah. Leads? Okay. Leads. So we need more leads. Leads. How are we going to get more time? We're coming Come on. Leverage. <clears throat> How do we get more time? Leverage. Absolutely. Leads. There you go. So leads equals money. Whether it's your grandma, your cousin, your aunt, the comment that you got on your Facebook, the DMs that you're getting on Instagram, the video content comments that you're getting. Those are all leads. You guys need more leads to get more money and leverage to get more time back. Okay, so we have to succeed through others, right? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So, short term, long term nurtures, you guys. So, short term nurtures are immediate sales, long term nurture are eventual sales, right? Eventual. So, you guys get a lead, you gotta decide if you're ready now or you're ready in the future, am I wrong? You're looking to buy now or later, right? right? So there's only two type of leads that we get to simplify. You're either going to make money from them now or in the future. It's the future that a lot of us suck at converting. Because you guys give up, you guys aren't touching on them. How many of you guys have lost clients that you put into a database because you didn't talk to them enough? Right? And that's just going to help us overcome this shift. It doesn't mean you have to work harder, guys. You do have to double up on your activities. You have to double up on them. That's why tech is here. Tech is here to do the things that we're not naturally good at. Yeah. Remember, tech is here to do the things that we are not naturally gonna. All right. That's what it is. Yeah. Whether it's long term or short term, like you have a client experience promise that you're trying to give to them, and the best way to be consistent with that is like, technology. Oh. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry, but technology is everything. The way the consumer has the consumers changed. They're going on Google. They're going on the big Z. That's why Zillow is one of the biggest in the world, right? They're going on these big internet things and. The capture sites regardless, so yeah, it's interesting. 
Okay. And then to get more time, you yeah. either need you need leverage, and to get leverage, it's either going to be through tools or through people. So what do you need leverage with, you guys? Through tools. Tools or people. The most powerful tool ever made is what? People. Technology. Oh, they're just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the most powerful tool of business. Yeah, I guess credit for the first. Powerful tool of people? No, they exactly. <laughs> That's tech. Yeah, tech is everything, you guys. You have to become the tech enabled agents. We can't let technology take us over. We have to embrace it. And it's scary for a lot of people that don't know how to embrace it properly. Right? But that's it. That's all it boils down to. I need the right tools and the right people. I need the right systems in place. You guys, even those of you that are afraid to touch technology, you're going to hire people. If you don't know how to inspect what you expect, how are you going to know they're doing the job properly? Mm -hmm. You're going to run into issues where you're going to trust an admin for months, and then you'll, it's not until you need to replace them, and you have someone that actually did the deep that you realize they didn't really do much. Mm -hmm. Oh man, they weren't touching these clients. We did three smart clients in the last three months. You know, it's not, so you have to learn your systems and then leverage them out. Because how can I hold her accountable? Or even our, for example, like holding our team accountable here, so we don't even know how it works. Right? right? We don't even know how to check. So we have to be able to do that ourselves. So, so that's depending on where you're at with your business. People are expensive. People are very expensive. You're paying stuff, you're paying them hourly, right? You're paying them money, you're trusting them. You're trusting them to run your database, right? For you. So luckily, that's why command's really good at all of its smart funds that it's doing. It touches clients for you. At a high level. No. All right. <laughs> you guys, what's the challenge with technology? Uh, that it can be what? Intimidating. It can be intimidating. That's like the number one conversation. You guys will have no idea how many people need inside to talk to. The top producers. I interview some of the biggest top producers in the area. People that you see on Facebook that you're probably having lunch and dinner with, going to have I promise you, I've sat with them at some point. And every single person has the same thing. They're going to say. They're afraid of that, or they say, like, oh, I don't really want to go to KW because you guys have all that technology stuff. I, I sit down and like, grow I'm sorry for you and your business, because the next five years, I would say this to them. I know we're on live, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you guys, you have to edit. <laughs> edit, 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 edit. No, but seriously, I really do feel sorry for you because here's the thing there are people out there, and I want to reiterate this there's producers out there that don't have to adapt that easily because you guys have spent the last 10 years developing that personal relationship that can get you that business that you need. You guys, which is called what? Referral business, right? So if you've been licensed less than three years, less than five even right now, then you don't have that. You don't have the luxury. Yeah, you've developed some past clients, some referrals, but you don't have the luxury that most agents have been in for like 15 or 20 years now. They put in that time to be able to have their referral business and they have their own systems in place, right? But for those of us that are newer, I've been in only the industry for only eight years, well, seven years, licensed places. So I've been in for like that much time, but still, even with me, I don't have that much luxury. I'm able to get referrals here and there, but not at a high level to maintain a good life that I want. Not the life that I want. How many of you right now just on referrals can live the life that you want? Raise your hand. Those of you watching this that uh, are on the stream, like raise your hand virtually if you're really genuinely happy with their COVID idea. None of us are, right? I, not me, I know those people like Sophia that can say that she is. They get referrals on stop because she's built that referral business like crazy because of the systems that she put in place. It's tools and people, guys. She's had people before technology. And luckily, the people that she helped, helped develop that. But for those of us, especially in a shift in the economy, that are trying to save money, we can't afford people half the time. Like, think about it. I wish I could afford to hire two more people, but it's about the money, too. So when you're cutting expenses, and you don't have the people, we have the technology and tools. And that's why we're pushing this, because it's like the most affordable option for us to grow our businesses and double it. Yeah, the other thing with technology too is it's just, people are uncomfortable. It's not, you say, like, I'm not a tech person, and it's not like, it's biologically you can't do tech, you're just uncomfortable, you're not used to it. Yeah, you're not used to it, right? Like, you know, Bailey, I'm not gonna lie, I used to be uncomfortable looking at our books, right? <laughs> yeah, I was uncomfortable with like, uh, doing our transmittals and high numbers, because I was intimidated by it. But it wasn't until I really sat down and broke it down section by section. And I, I think we put, took like two days or a day with each other. And then I, I feel like an expert now, right? But I was intimidated by that. Because it's scary when you're transmitting from all the big producers and closing books up and escrows need to be transferred over. It's intimidating at first. Kind of like you guys. It's intimidating to want to log in there, 
put your family in a smart plan because it's so scary you send them an email. <laughs> God forbid you have to call them for five minutes, right? <laughs> so, so it's like, it's, it's intimidating, it is. I'm not going to take that away from people. And it, it, it happens every day, so. Yeah, so it can make you uncomfortable, but it 100% makes our lives better. See, I remember get this. You remember this washing the washing machine? <laughs> Who feels more comfortable washing their clothes with a rock than a washing machine? <laughs> yeah, remember this? Remember the washboard in Mexico? You swim in Mexico yeah. still, who's Hispanic? Or by the river. Yeah, by the river. By the river, right? Yeah. You guys grew up with the, with this, oh, right? The washboard. They that thing yeah. that they had, like, what was it? Right? And you had to bring the buckets of water. Yeah. 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 The, sh the shaker. Yeah. The shaker. Yeah. shaker. Yeah. Remember that? Everybody missed the TV now? Change channels on I, the TV I actually, I'll be honest, I miss the old TV, so I'm not going to lie. <laughs> It wasn't easier. <laughs> you, know the you guys know that going back to the washing machine, I only went ahead. But you know the washing machines? There was big controversy. And it's funny because you look up articles, there's articles of people that are against putting them in their houses. Mm -hmm. Washing machines that yeah. all this stuff. It's kind it's of scary. interesting that over time as things have evolved, it's it was scary. But you all know it's scary. And there's still a lot of people that don't take in that type of machinery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of uh, Mormon groups and stuff like that, and um, you saw it, right? <coughs> and there's a whole like Amish community in Tennessee that yeah. they don't drive cars, they don't yeah. watch TV, they still live like yeah, it's because it's deemed yeah. as scary, right? and, they're, and they're and they're healthy, right? Yeah, they're pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I don't know. but they they cook uh -huh. all of their own food and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. I know people that love to escape it. And they saved that life. And now they're doing good. I met them through PSI so it's kind of cool. They shared their stories of what they went through and struggled. So it's kind of interesting. So if this, like, that's a good example. People are afraid to adapt to technology, adapt to commands, adapt to tech, but it's taken over. Whether it's command or not, guys, I'm not even just talking about command. Command can be at the one out there, what CRM you use, you, you have to use something to get the adapt. That's what they're all doing. At any company that anyone's at, they're using technology to advance themselves. Got a few more. Who like prefers to use cash and checks instead of their credit card, debit card? Do we hate Who use that Who uses that for pay? Me. Who uses like their Domino's points app? Right? Chick fil A. Okay. Like, or the Chipotle app. <laughs> <laughs> My money went down the ground. Uh huh. Right? So, use <laughs> something like that. It's scary, but it's not convenient. It's convenient and makes it better for your client experience, right? So, that's what we imagine your clients feel like using our apps. Yeah. Like you to do. Prefer to use list sheets in the MLS? Who's been licensed in here? Anyone wants to tell? Uh, 16. 16. Was that enough when you had to go to uh, the board to look at the listings? No. No, 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 no. What year was, was that? Probably like, I'd say like the early 80s. Okay, no, no, no. Yeah. I so like, yeah, you don't really know. You had to go. Yeah, I don't know. Some of y'all. But, anyways, I'd say like in the 80s. So, the earth, back in case, in case you guys didn't know, the MLS is a book. I'm sure you're aware of. So for a realtor to go and show property, they would have to go to the board, like SOTR or Tigar, they'd have to walk in there and get a list together manually of every home that's for sale in the area to go and view it. So they would have to go get a list of it, get the phone number. So they would go open this big book, look at the end. And I was able to look at recipes Phil, but he was able to show me like examples of it. So super cool. Like you would go in there, drive all the way to the board, get a list of all the houses, and you have to do it every single time you're planning to go view. Not to mention to put them in your car. Exactly. Not to mention those little old lock boxes you had to write those out of them. Can you see pictures of those? I don't know if I should put one up for you guys, but it's interesting. But would you, wouldn't you say it's a convenient to have our super apps? Yeah. Be poppy, go up with the thing, our phones, be able to touch the button, the schedule showing. Mm -hmm. It's super convenient, right? And we always find ways to find ways to complain. Yeah, that's one, cool. yeah. Keep going through. All right. So yeah, but essentially what we're getting into is that it's just that it's that evolution of technology, the uncomfortableness that's frustrating. Yeah. So we need to get comfortable. Yeah. So we can use it and take full advantage of it for your businesses. Absolutely. It's not the evolution of technology that's frustrating, it's the path of learning how to use it. Right? It's not the evolution, it's the path. The path that we take. You have to read the map, you take the time to go up to command, you put the people and learn about it. Oh, it's actually pretty easy. I just imported them and from a from my Excel thing, and it was really easy. easy. <laughs> so it's intimidating, but as soon as you learn how to do it, it's easy, right? Yeah. So it's scary for some reason, what you said? 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm actually with Dr. Hillary, you did yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's super cool. All right. But it's simple. Y'all, this is simple. <laughs> <laughs> this is simple. You're going to create, when you create a contact, you two, you're creating contact for two reasons, right? You're creating it to put them on a smartphone or to create opportunity because you're opening extra. Some of you all be putting it last minute into opportunity. Yeah. Some of you, I'm serious, <laughs> there was a time in this office when the only time people input is contacts in our database was just purely because they opened an extra with them. Mm -hmm. And imagine all the touches that they missed before that. Yeah, it was that time. I think 75%, right? right? Well, I say, honestly, like even now, opportunity is probably the most underutilized tool that we have at our fingertips. That oh, most people were using smart plans and all of that for the eventual, but like the immediate business to track where you're at in your transactions, like adding that like opportunity before you open escrow. Because there's so much more that goes into it. I don't do that. Yeah, yeah. I think it calculates the time that it takes you to get them from nurture to active yes. to under contract. You go, you can, you can it, right? Yeah. So you guys can open up the opportunity for your ever escrow guys. It helps you track a lot. It helps you track your work, your how much money you're gonna make off of it and everything. Just huge also because people talk all the time about like it can be uncomfortable being commission only for payment. So like this is giving you those predictable analytics of like, okay, here's how much money I have coming. Either A, this is awesome, things are about to get good, or B, I need to pick it up. Prospect more. So opportunity is it gives you guys an like I said, it gives you an opportunity to track where you're at. Isn't that crazy? It's insane. And the smart button is the eventual, the clients that are not ready, right? You're touching them with um, 356, 36 touch, however you want to do touch your clients. There's so many smart plans out there, it's insane. Literally, men who want to find smart plans, they spend some time looking some up on literally just tracking them and they add like five. So it's that simple to use. My favorite one is a little group family and friends one. So, okay, all right. Stuff. What's the secret, Bailey? What's the secret the stuff? Secret is having number? all the financial success you ever dreamed of. Why is it two numbers? Three and two hundred one plus. Uh, <laughs> three and two hundred one plus to ship in the right? No, but seriously, so there's three major lead sources as you guys know, right? Boom. There we go. Next turn. We're going to be lead sources. That's the challenge of. Leads, the company the source. The go, over, go, over the, so, go over the percentages. Percentages, yeah. So, first one, I mean, we're going to go into each one, but Sorry. essentially, you're looking at almost 80% come from three lead sources. 80% of all real estate transactions come from three different lead sources. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they are. You guys know what they are? Yes. Did they ever write it? Yes. What for all? Database. Open house. Mm. Mm. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Keep going. Nobody's guessed the 38% yet. Door knocking? Cold calling? These are all accurate. They're not wrong. Repeated right. business. What is the number one these are Your experiments. Social media. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, guess what? It's online leads. Mm. Uh, mm. oh. mm. Isn't that crazy? Online leads from your smart clients or ads that you guys put out. Not just us, not just online things from us. It's every single, by the way, this is looking at real estate as a whole, the entire market right now. Mm -hmm. The largest portion of leads are from online. And it's from people clicking us on your social media, the Instagram, the Instagram comments, the DMs mm -hmm. that you guys are doing, and the lead capture sites that you guys have. Whether you guys are posting your websites out there or your ads. Is that vital? Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> All right. The other thing, I think at this point, almost all of us have seen this chart before, but we're going to keep showing it. We're going to keep showing you guys. It's in the math. It's proven. What every single person that has made over $100,000 in real estate has 200 con and one plus contacts in their database on smart plans. So if you guys have more than that, that's great, but none of them are smart plans. You have at least to be intentional, right? So you guys have at least minimum 201. Intentional contacts in your database, you will make money. It's proven, it's in the math, it's 100% there. Oh, yeah, it's on the screen. Yeah, I think it's worth noting always like yeah. this math is showing this is like the whole company, and this isn't based off of people having contacts uh, or having smart, their contacts on smart plans, and the, like the entire company 
once you hit that 201 plus, if you have it on SARC plans, you'll be exceeding that 120,000. And scientifically, it's like proven, proven, proven. If you guys literally have them on a smart plan and did not make a hunter's day this year, come show us the math. Because it's uh, like, there's no way. It's pretty cool. It's kind of neat how they did all this. And like my favorite thing to see is like the ones that make over 250K, like exactly how many contacts you have in the database. It's a fun little graphic to look at. And just be like, wow. It's a different way to think of things in businesses. All right. So the thing is, we have the maintenance, the top 100, remember? Gary Keller and Jason and Mark King, with the interview, their top collegiate group. And basically, they brought it down to two sections. They said it's the grow phase and the run. So they knocked down, what is a grow? What are they doing to grow their stuff, the databases and feed themselves? And what are they doing to run this? And you'll see. I'm not coming good from here. Can we go over that? All right, guys, so this is what they're doing to grow. They make buyers, for, this all sounds familiar, right? They make presentations, buyer seller. What a shocker. We're talking about doing buyer presentations and listing presentations, right? Show houses, schedule showings. They do pre listing work, staging them, etc. They order photos, market listings, right? Contracts, and this is all the jobs of a realtor, right? You all heard this before? Yes. Inspection, broker compliance, they receive commission, vendor management. They attend trainings. They get coaching. They all have coaches. The majority of everyone's in max coaching in the top 100. They track their goals. They manage their money. They keep their GPSs, which is the 125 that we teach you guys how to do, and 411s. And they have a they have organized calendars. Does that sound familiar? It's all things you've heard before, but this is what people that are running high level businesses are doing. Right? So, what do they have that they run? Database engagement, expiring cancel, fizzbos, door knocking, open house, high events, seminars, Popeyes, social ads, farming, some of the real estate letters, um, digital or printed. H how many of you guys have heard all these? Some of these are not new, right? It's not new, you guys, but this is what they're doing at a very high level. It's not that they're doing it better than us, they're doing it more consistently than us. What's the BBC? The what? No, Paper clip. Pay per click. Pay per click. Oh. So ads. Digital. Oh, good question. Good question. Good job. So basically, this is what they do. They grow and run. They grow these things, right? So we said, they said that we define how they do it. So number one, they make calls by saying, go someone on a dialer. Some of them do voicemail drop. These are all real answers of interviews with people that are crushing it right now. From a million dollar business with KW. Um, they send text messages, they send email, they send lead capture stuff, they track a lot of interactions. Wow, sounds like command does a lot of this, right? <laughs> um, they export mailing labels, they buy gifts, right? They set up searches, they set up showing, they run CMAs, they create marketing material. A lot of this stuff is stuff that we do, they just do it a lot more consistently than us. Systematically. Systematically. They do this systematically and a lot more consistently than us, you guys. So they send direct mail, they post on social media, they create follow-up plans. All of this is stuff we've worked for. This is what they're doing, guys. Um, basically, they write offers, they write contracts, they submit for compliance, and yada, yada. It's the real estate process. But what they do primarily is what I got from it is all of them have coaches, they're tracking their stuff, they're consistently doing this, they systemize their systems, and they're doing this consistently. Right? A lot of words in that. So hopefully you guys are learning it. Yeah. Right down here. What is the math equation for how real estate agents grow and run their business? What do agents do every day to grow and run their businesses? What do they do? It's the how and what they do that creates it, right? And they have plays. Yeah, that's the DNA. This is literally the DNA of you guys, this is you guys. Alright? This is what you do, this is how you do it, these are the plays in between that you make. And the plays are like the playbooks that you guys create. It's maybe your open house checklist, it's your listing presentation, it's your listing walkthrough presentation, or buyer's console. Do you guys have that system lines yet? At a high level? Somewhat, right? We're going to use technology a lot more than we do once you get your listing and stuff. So some of the plays you guys have, right? So the what? These are the three things. So. Open houses, you create marketing material, you email your database, and you post to social media. 
Expired accounts will be made calls and you track and log the interactions and through the door knock, all right? Do you agree with those of you that do it? So client events, you post social media, create marketing material, send email, and use follow-up plans. You guess what? All of these are already in command. These are all tech plays that you guys can systemize. And there's a bunch of playbooks for this too. There's tons of playbooks. I know I've talked about it in a team meeting and we're talking about it like crazy. The playbooks are awesome because there's an open house one that step by step will tell you how to market your open house properly. In command. Literally step by step. Can't mess up. Don't miss a step. And then you go. We're gonna go with this. So this is the phase of a contact. And phase of the lead. So boom, boom, boom. They either come from lead source one, two, or three. Agree? Mm -hmm. And then there's lead source four to six, which is what? The referrals and blah blah. So see the internet lead, or you guys got them cold calling, dialing, door knocking, you met them at a client event, blah, blah, blah. So then that becomes a contact and command. You're going to add tags, and then create custom fields for them. Are they a nurse, doctor, lawyer, were they married, divorced? That's when you guys can use them as a tag really quick. Then you can create an opportunity for the immediate person that's ready to buy, and the smart plan for the eventual. Just quickly put them on a smart plan. And yeah, so buyers, you can send them property searches, and sellers, you can send them monthly neighborhood nurtures. nurtures. These are already, you can look this up on command. Property searches are already attacked, you guys can set them up on the smart plan, I mean. And then the sellers on the monthly neighborhood nurtures are already one that you can automatically add them on. And then actions, you can reach out to recently active, or you can call everyone quarterly, right? We've all heard of DTD2 do the database twice. If you guys don't know, um, we'll post like, a link to it, it's all on KW Connect. And you guys can actually call your database by, by letter. So A W V W, and D, we, and it makes you break away from call biases, because some of us still do it. I don't call this person. And then you end up calling them, kind of like I meant like the power of one more, you decide to make that one phone call, and then you get leads, right? Or we had the best conversation ever, right? right? I called someone I didn't want to call because I kind of, literally this just happened, I called them on Tuesday, I didn't want to call her, but I kind of blew her off on accident of buyer. And I was kind of embarrassed because I had no idea I missed our appointment. I was like, oh, it's already been two weeks, like whatever. But I decided to call and apologize anyways, but she was just really grateful that I followed back up. And she actually was not mad at all, so on my head. Because <laughs> she forgot not to. <laughs> and this entire time, I thought she was mad at me. I was like, man, I messed up. Like, oh, I usually always admit it, but I caught it two weeks later. How am I going to do this? And I was so scared. I was like, hey, I think you had an appointment like two weeks ago. And she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I forgot. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus, right? Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah that's like just, you know, I figured you're going to this stuff. So I just want to give you some time for a copy back two weeks later. Mm -hmm. And man, you never know. The power of making that call, deciding to make that contact, and not having any bias on it, right? But I don't do that normally, but so we all make mistakes for human. Do you guys agree? You guys do the same? It happens. Right? But this is exactly what they want you guys to do, to systemize it by, by contact. So online leads, right? So social media, search engines, and lead aggregators. Social media is what? Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. What are some search engines? Your Google Ads, your what? Bing and Yahoo. Those are the three major search engines right now. Right? So those are the ads you can get through there. And lead aggregators, you have Zillow, Right, the big one, Ojo, and those are the The three different online leads, right? Ojo, we're in partnership with them, and Opsity, too, if you guys want to learn about how to get leads from them. Opsity is the zero.com. And Opsity is both right now. So, we have partnership with these people, but they need to pay a big fat referral fee, but we don't take it off the table. Some agents would like to make a sliver instead of the whole river. I think Redfin <laughs> does that too, referral partners. Redfin. We need to join them to do it. So don't. The reset. So it's kind of cool, but these are the online lead targets that they're using right now, Realtors right now. Right now, they're partnering with Zillow, Ojo, Realtors.com. They're running ads through there, and then partnering. TikTok's huge, you guys. How many of you guys are on TikTok? Are you on TikTok? Mm -hmm. I didn't go dive into it. I don't know. Is, is it still is it still okay? Are they taking it away? It's still good. It's still good. It's still good. I got two leads from TikTok, and one I already had in my phone. 
like when I, I was like sending it because he said, I'm an investor. And I said, okay, we'll check this property out and let me know what you pay for it. And then he's like, okay, can we, can you call me to discuss? So I put the number on my phone and it comes up, David Stone investor. I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> so like, it just, you know, why is, why, you know why he's talking to TikTok? Because it's contacts, contacts. Yeah. yeah. So it's That's just- That's what command does. Yeah. Command takes whatever in your database and will automatically target them on your ads. Mm-hmm. I hope you guys know that any ads you guys push out through the command uh, um, running ads to Facebook, they will see it. All your contacts will see it. Because when I run an ad, all my friends can see it. I'm like, I see your stuff. And I'm like, what comes to my credit? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so I was a little creeped out at first, but then I was like, oh, now that I have the number <laughs> in my phone, I'm not as creeped out. <laughs> How do I make this look bigger? Like, I can't, huh? No. I just want to see this. It goes away. But anyways, you guys, so thrive online. Who wants to thrive online? By the way, um, you can use Facebook ads and command to test your message. You can run Facebook ads with more dollars to generate at a higher scale, right? Because you're earning. So as soon as you try to test it out, you're testing your message, you get some good clips, now you know how to do it, so you're learning. As soon as you add more of a budget, it's getting more reach, more clicks, you're earning, right? Yeah, we're essentially playing about the great life. Right? Let's put the money in there and then let's hold it accountable. If that message didn't do well, are you really going to put another $100,000 if they get an ad out there? No, right? So you guys are testing it out. Your data testing yourself, your message. Um, there are some people that have pushed ads out, they're like, I got no clicks, it didn't work. And I was like, let's your ad. And I'm like, honestly, we're not clicking on that either. Hey, you $25, now you just found out that your ad is not good enough for the market and go back to the drawing board. Go back to the drawing board, it happens. So you have to play around with your message and what people are using. We've done it. Um, a lot of, yeah, we've done it too. Yeah. With us, you have to see our ads. So we have to play with it. Was this message good? No, we can make it more appealing. Let's try to say this. Let's, let's, let's look at other ads. What are they saying? And it's our shooting keywords. So you guys will be doing the same thing. And it's super cheap to run the ads yourself. And so partnering with another company and also watch percentage of it. Mm-hmm. But we don't knock it. You can run Google ads, you can run TikTok ads as well. And now, pretty soon, supposedly, right the next quarter, KWRI, like you guys said, we would click them to TikTok from command soon. So I think they're just added. I'm sure that's like a lot more complicated than they thought because China owns TikTok. <laughs> and we cover a lot of the ads through that now. It's a little difficult, but I'm hoping that'll be a large click, but that'll be through command and everybody do it soon. And now, right now, it works right now, you guys do Instagram. So you guys know you do Instagram and Facebook through command, right? No, so that's what YouTube oh, yeah. oh, yeah, and YouTube. So now through YouTube and TikTok, we'll be able to do the clips there, too. TikTok, too? TikTok as well, through, through command. command. Wow. Not right now, but coming Happens very soon. soon. Yeah, very, very soon. soon. Well, they showed us a data test, like, in the next two, three months? Yes. yes. Okay. Definitely yeah. by next quarter. Right now, the first quarter is ending. Okay. So definitely by next quarter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because right now it's really working. It's oh, it's, it's, it's going to be TikTok's taking it's over. It's just what? Because it's so quick. It's taking over. Yeah, People say, that. oh, my TikTok is going to phase. No, it's not, right? It's not going anywhere. Facebook is going down. It's, yeah. Yeah, TikTok is up. Facebook videos is going up. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook yeah. is getting boring. Yeah, yeah. Been been the same well, ever since Facebook started with the reels from Instagram, I think it's been like the exact same thing. Yeah. So now they have reels. So TikTok video reels. No, Facebook reels is spiking up, and Snapchat videos too, which is random. I think part of the future. I thought Snapchat was done. <laughs> I thought it was, but I was this little social media Zoom thing, and I was like, what? I, don't know. I see people like there all the time. Like, why are you there? I don't have Snapchat. Like, I, mean, I just get the, you know, the like, are you serious? Yeah. I still have Snapchat, but then like I'll eventually post, occasionally post on there, and I get lots of hits on real estate questions. I'm like, oh. Okay, I guess this is your chat for him. Like, I'm gonna really keep it. But you guys, so you're gonna try to, you're gonna contact your leads to determine if the window by yourself, so, and then eventually they turn into lead, right? So, this is just a way that you guys can do it. You can put each person on Ever and Nurture. You can put each person on Safe Search. You can car database four times a year. You can use Target My Database. It's a button, and you guys run ads in the It's called Target My Database. Do not miss it when you guys are running ads. So then specifically, your database is the one seeing all your ads. Just a little reminder that it literally says that. I forget it sometimes. Or we're saying top of mind. Yeah, I'm saying top, top of mind. Even us, with, as a market center, because we like to be very transparent and open, we have um, an account that's specifically for licensed agents and new, newly licensed agents, right? People want to get their real estate license, newly licensed agents and agents out in town. 
So then now that we have all their info in there, they're going to be targeting our ads at a really high level, so call me back. <laughs> no, but really, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. It's targeting my audience. And then there's part of like, yeah, I want to see Jay's face. So like, geez, like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they'll be seeing you as well, whatever ads you guys have. It's pretty neat. I'm, I'm excited for this. So it says command today, right? It, at the time. Command today. So we're going to the shift and tour where I've got these slides. We borrowed them. We acquired them. So I'm really grateful we acquired them. At the time, the manual ads that we have we went to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I don't know if you guys remember. Those of you that have been with us for more than a year, remember those? Were you, were you running ads last year? Yeah. Yeah, I remember those were the only three that went about it. So, you know, just the three basic things, but now we have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Google, Dynamic Ads, and Retargeting. Dynamic Ads and Retargeting are super, super exciting. Yeah, I'll go so, to Yeah, yeah. Here. So, Dynamic Ads is essentially going to be so you can have, have they click something and they have to answer some questions. And they that will make you actually get more serious leads coming in. So, this, so the Dynamic is huge, because that's when you can see if they're serious or not. And that's... No, they ask, they will ask too, like, when, by when are you going to buy? How or it asks it kind of asks like pre qualification questions for you before you get the ad in, the lead in. That would get you higher quality leads. Kind of thing. Yeah, I mean it gives you higher quality leads. Cool. It and makes you wonder that that campaign is working. That retargeting is awesome. So if somebody goes on to your agent site and they're like, oh, okay, all right, I'm gonna go do this, it like locks in on them, and now when they go on their Facebook, they're gonna be like, oh hey, here's my ad. I'm here, anywhere they go, Google, oh, here's my Google ad, hey, there, they want to come back to my agent uh, site. <laughs> so really, why do you guys adapt to this? That's a huge, huge component. Like you said, if they act, if they just go on your page, get bored, don't click anything, I'm like, I think that was nice to see on the page. It'll purposely, like I said, grab their info and follow them like crazy. So when they go on TikTok and they're on Google, when they're literally scrolling mindlessly through Instagram, they're going to see your ads pop up. And they're sitting like crazy. And that happens now. We get retargeted like crazy. You guys be talking about something and all of a sudden it pops up on your phone. You guys know this not? It's gonna happen right now. You're probably targeting a brand of things. And that's retargeting. Say what we say, you went to a certain website. Some of us will go on have our in our our cards on Amazon and then we don't buy it, we don't check it out, we see our cards that pop up on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. That's because they retarget us. Yes. Where are we gonna do that now? So <laughs> that's pretty cool, though. It's awesome. All right. So going in, uh, the other option for getting online leads is the lead aggregators. So that's what we were talking about with the Ojo, yes. Realtor.com, Zillow, and there's a million of them. I'm going to stop. There's, people spend billions every year for uh, leads from lead aggregators. You do. So what they did is get it right. Like, let's just look up every single platform out there and how much it costs. It is. So this is where, like, if you downloaded the slides, because this one. Yeah, because this is the one that we printed out. This is like, we printed a teeny tiny. So if you guys have it on your phone, you can just zoom in, follow along. But yeah, it's, you guys can see how much it costs too. They gave you a full comparison chart of exactly what the price is for each of these uh, different services and what they offer. The cheapest one is Command, I see. <laughs> I'm just wow. saying. But I'm just saying. They go on and on. Pretty much some of them are going to charge you a monthly fee uh, to get a service. Others are going to charge you a referral fee for every single lead that you close. I see the monthly fee. like 35 to 38 percent of that transaction. You guys have heard that, right? Like 35 percent of the eight singles is Zillow or something like that. It looks like leads. Yeah. It's kind of cool. They divide, they got every single system that's out there right now. You guys can call price match. I think what we're trying to realize is that agents are going to pay regardless, so let's just put it all on the chart and show you guys what command can do compared. I want you to pay for the best deal. Yeah. And a lot of these they platforms, they all do the same thing. Yeah. Similar mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, and it's just command, little things that are different. Yeah. Command does all in one. So all in HUD that does all You don't have to pay for a referral fee. No. That's so cool to have the options. All right, so yeah, that goes into online leads. So our next, second most common lead source is open houses. Yeah, so it's kind of cool because it's like a playbook game for people that have been around for a while. Um, I got like seven years I've been doing this, and uh, I started off doing open houses like crazy. Almost, it's the market that we're in again, by the way, yeah. like crazy. So would you say this? You pick the right house, 
Why you hold open your own listings, new to market homes, low underscore neighborhoods. This is how you pick the right house, right? You create marketing materials, which you all do. Um, flyer, registration sheet, scorecards, that sounds familiar. You guys have done that. Uh, market the open house. You invite your database, invite the neighborhood, and post social media. How many of us are inviting our databases to open houses? Oh, you do? Yeah. There you go. So you use a command to invite people to your open houses? Well, yeah. Well, it was before I um, have everybody in my command now, but I would invite everybody that I know that lives in the area. Well, there you go. That's why tags are important. But so the tags are important. Can so you guys can tag your database by city that they're in, and you guys are doing one in the city, and you can just set Emmett or Paris. Yeah, and then boom, invite the entire the database to the open house for having first. So it's pretty cool that you guys can do that. Um, a lot of the people that I met at Hammer Union, they're doing it at a high level. Like they're targeting their tags and command at a very specifically too. Or they're like inviting them to like um they like communities have like a, you guys heard of the community event like um Donut with the Cop and stuff like that when they go and get coffee. So they specifically invite all of their community to that too. Little small tabs like that, pretty neat. For Veterans Day, invite them to go put up flags, put up your bets in the database. Mm -hmm. It's pretty neat stuff. That's and up. you get ready to host, you sit outside, drive early, you follow up, and then you go follow up tests. All of this is part of the playbook. Yeah, pretty much, this is pretty much like a table of contents for an open house playbook where they're going to go in depth on each different activity and how to do it. Now, what's really cool is KW made a code book to go and accompany these playbook playbooks where it's gonna tell you exactly which codes to use, so how to use command to do it for you. So the code number one is make calls, right? Number 19, social media free. So that literally breaks down how to do this, how to set up your smart plans. I think really cool, because like you said, it's that learning, like going the learning process that like really stresses it out, makes it say, I'm not a tech person, I don't want to do this. So like this lets you break it down slowly, like, okay, I'm gonna start using command for my open houses, so this is what I can do in command and this is how I do it for these activities. Okay, like let's not look at the whole entire picture, trying to learn the whole thing at once, just how do I use command to market my open houses? How do I use command to run all my leads? And it's completely broken down step by step and just take it one at a time. We have the entire codes and code book on our website. Is it on the Fab Union side? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, we have it at the end too, right? Yeah. So we have this, you can scan this at the end and look through all the codes, but everything's done for us in a way that we don't have to hire the best leverage. We can just do it ourselves. They broke it down, which is pretty awesome. So I can go on there and say, how do I follow up with an agent? You know, it's cool. It gives me a great step by step by step what to do. Yeah. All right, going into the third lead source, your SOI. Sphere of influence. That's a big one, right? <coughs> so guess what? People do business with people they like. Right? I don't really quote, I don't want to mess this up. <laughs> but I don't know, right? Okay, All right, there you go. So guess what? Technology allows us to be more likable by more pe to more people more often. How's that? It does. People like will work with people they like. So that's why I tell people I used to get asked all the time, why do you have one Instagram? I don't separate my business from personal. Because people I want to work with are people that want to work with me. Right, people that are gonna like me, know me for who I am, and want to work with me. And the same with you, I'm sure that we can always hear you guys up. Guess what? When I walk to realtors, I look at everybody's social media. I'm like, this is the person I want to be in the KW. And if they have a profile picture of a gun, that's perfect. Nowadays you might need to I don't want to go to the shooting range. I don't know. I'm going to start going to the shooting range and I start I'm a fan of it, but it's not about that. It's about the professionalism that goes behind the main photo, right? I will kill any ninja because every time I go to the shooting range, I don't know. 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 I don't
your database if you got a bank. The money that you have, it's money sitting in the bank. Think about it. All the people in context on your phone is all money. It's all sitting here. It's all potential money. It's a database. You're putting them in there with the possibility of them buying or selling money with you. Or setting referrals. I have people in my database that will never probably buy a house, God bless their soul, but they send me referrals because I still take sales with them. They're still part of my call plan. You know what I mean? And I'm still follow up with them. I still, give them, I still buy them like events as a thank you because they're still in my sphere, right? So, a powerful SOI campaign. This is a description of contacts. Look at this. Whoa. Some of you guys have heard of this. It's called the 36 touch. Who has heard of us talk about the 36 touch? This is literally what it is. So it's 12, right? A combination of 12 mailing letters, cards, emails, or drop offs, right? Like pop guys. You guys have heard of that? Right? A lot of you do it at a high level here. The just sold, your personal newsletter, recipe cards, the recipe magnets. You guys have seen that? The magnetic calendars, whatever it is. Your real estate news articles. Those are the 12 touches that you guys do, right? Which is one touch a month. And then eight, thank you, or thank you cards, four phone calls, four personal um, cards, basically birthdays, anniversaries, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Veterans Day, whatever it is, right? Four holidays and four client events. So basically this is 36 touches, 36 times you can touch a client. Your birthday is right? Go, go, go. No, yeah, there's 36 touches each year. This is how you're staying top of mind to make sure that past client uses you again this time. Yeah, yeah the Gutierrez team does a 36 touch at a high level, mm -hmm. right? This is different times you guys can reach out to your clients. You guys have a copy of this too, right? You understand? This is a good reminder for us. So 30 powerful touches, right? You guys can have, this is an example of events that you guys can have, and I loved it. I love this slide. Right? You guys can take them wine tours. You guys can have even Zoom events for free, guys. Zoom events. A lot of people do bars of uh, presentations on Zoom. I've been to a couple of our agents, Zoom's here, the Gutierrez scene on theirs. That's free, that's fun. You guys can do uh, cameo touches, you guys send videos to your client, you can buy like the ten dollar ones of comedians and they can send them to your client personalized. That's a good one that I never even realized I could do as like a uh, gift. You guys can think of a concert, you guys can do raffles for literally anything. You guys know that? You know what, great touch, um, Easter Bunny pictures, and we're actually hosting that here uh, next. I know, our Easter event. Right, go get an Easter event with the Lens Center in two weeks. Go get an Easter event? Exactly, well, that's a good one. Great <laughs> touch. So that's a good touch, you guys. Uh, job removal, gutter cleaning, yard waste bag drop-offs, ice cream trucks for the kids, a community block party. Right? A charity drive, a pie giveaway, Santa pictures, which we do at the office. Easter bunny pictures, like we do at the office. The Easter egg now. We're doing that for you guys at the office, so. A movie night in the park. This is, yada, 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 you guys get the point, right? But these are some good touches um, to have for your clients. Or a turkey giveaway, like Derek did. Never mind. And once again, a reminder, this is what happens with the contacts every day. Good stuff? Yes, that's, that's, that's just like crazy, but you guys, there's just so much more to dive into. This is going to be broken down into multiple classes because I can't bore you guys keeping me here for hours. But there's so much stuff. You guys know your phones, uh, scan this, and you guys just just look at the playbooks. Like, look at the open house one. Uh, the seminar playbook is pretty awesome. I'm going to use that even for some tips for my career next that I have. Some good tips in there. I was like, shoot, I could learn from that. Boom. Scan this, look at the playbooks. Um, the online leads one will help break down like, how to run ads at a high level. If you guys have any difficulties, remember you guys can always talk to Kirsten here at the office, or um, I could go above that and you guys can meet with Ruben, and he's our regional tech. And he's going to address any deeper issues or give you some better advice for you guys. It's pretty neat, cool stuff. Just remember, guys, um, the biggest thing about the shift is that the market's not the only thing that's shifting. It's not just buying. It's not just how you guys are approaching buyers and sellers. The consumer has changed. The consumer has shifted the way that they get their info. That's like the biggest thing. So it's like hard for to see people that don't want to adapt to this or embrace it. Yeah, so like you, you don't have to use command, but you do need to use technology. 
Exactly. Right. Some people you can have a preference on something else, but if you're not using technology, you're going to fall behind. If you're using, you don't, if you're using to command, that's fine. I mean, it's kind of hard. But if you guys are using it, fall behind. <laughs> <what? laughs> Why would you go do all this stuff? But either way, like, I used to do four command trimmings, but it was I used to pay for Mojo, Follow Up Boss, and um, I forgot what other one. Like, commissions, something? Conversion? Something to convert to. I used to pay for like 300 things. And that cost me so much money, so thank goodness you have to command now. You gotta think about the money I spent. Oh man, how much I thought money went. But I think either way, whether you guys use command, whether it's whatever other live stream source you guys use, the free one on whatever it is, everyone uses that. You have to embrace that. So that's what I gathered from the meeting. I condensed it. I'm like, Woo! Woo! But guess what? You guys want to register for a free class? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm gonna double check. So you guys, I highly, highly recommend taking this class. Have a it. Right, so it's free. It's free. It is free. It is free. It's free. It's free. You gotta build a database and feed it every day. And how to communicate using command. Guess right. what? This is worth your time. Now that you know it's free, you have some tricks. I'm giving you guys a link for a free class. My treat. Go to it. Go go go. No, but seriously, I recommend it. It's basically. It's just gonna tell you how to get started in the right foot. Some of you are already in command, but it doesn't hurt to go to this. It doesn't work. It's not working, so it's getting No. What? Oh, there it is. Sorry, just getting it. Oh, okay. Is that he wants my name and my login, right? No. Yeah. But it's still the case. So basically, you want to have both of them stuck in pipeline. All right. Free, there you go. Congratulations. Any other you guys? Did you guys learn anything, pick anything up? Anything cool that you guys want to revisit with the plan? Any ahas? I'll take one. Anything cool? Uh, Any takeaways? I got reminded of the trying to get my database, which I haven't gotten up. So I'm excited to go do that right now. Yeah, so yeah, right? Yeah. Don't forget about that. I forget to click that too. Mm -hmm. I hate to admit that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get an example of like what an ad would look like for a real estate agent? Like I've never made an ad. Yeah. Like being a real estate agent before. Like I know how to promote haircuts all day. Yeah. Because the haircut. I tried to do like a just a regular like post. Well, just anything. Like I mean, I'm cool with like pictures, like videos. Like I just don't know how to like get creative in that space. Yeah, moment, absolutely. You know? We can send you an example that we've had. Um, had. We had a recording on YouTube that Hector did at a high level, and he runs his ads. But not just that. The playbook actually breaks down step by step how you can do, it, and it gives you examples. Yes. Yeah. So the open house, the I'm sorry, the social media marketing one. You already told you like, it gives you like step by step like different things you can use. You can also use like a, another agent's listing in the office. We're more than happy. To, we want you to help advertise. You can advertise your listing. You can go that route. You can advertise yourself, which is one route. And um, we give you different templates to do. Advertise an event that you're doing. You can advertise an event, like we have an office one. I know you're new. You just joined us, but this is, we won't. You can put your name, your picture on it, right? Yeah, you should we'll invite your clients. And buy your clients to the Easter one. As a matter of fact, after this, do you have the link one? No, uh, Christian does. Christian, we have it. That would be a first hour right there. Just inviting your clients to the Easter hat. Okay. Yeah, we love fire that you can throw your picture on, throw your name. Honestly, do you just get a smartphone and send it out for free in your database and email first? Mm -hmm. Okay. Before you send any money in an app. Then you can start playing with those. Okay. But that'll be free. And you can just send your database. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to get creative too because I've Yeah. Been, um, that's so I just wanted to know, like, there's yeah, there's just how there's like a template on it. I think I don't know what that looks like. Because realtors, I think that's what we're trying to do too. Because a template for like a just listed, you know, or an open house template, um, they call it brand recognition. We're just introducing yourself, your services that I've seen, or they're advertising a listing. That's all I've ever seen, really. Or move for like the new signs as well. Like, we'll get your home sold in yeah, seven two hours. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did one that was, um, if you want to know the value of your home, click here. Yeah, there's another one off your website, agent site. Uh -huh. okay. So you can get them to your agent site too. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll help you with some examples. After this. But, but do that. ask her for the Easter one and invite all of your like past uh, clients from your barbershop. Yeah. For your picture with the Easter bunny, that's like, what, 30 bucks? They'll come for sure for that at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm excited about that one. So that's another one you can just invite your past clients to that and create ads from that. Okay. Like, don't know your home valuation is another good one that you can click on. Um, it could be like a loan program that you want to advertise to from the lender. I'm willing to hop on that. Mm -hmm. That's a dare. Voice. Yeah. 
You guys mentioned the property searches for the buyers. Is that a smart plan? It is. In the, it is. You can set them on property search through the map. Okay. Yeah. Ask your search to bring it up. I was looking for it here. It should be in there. You set them up on property searches through the map. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk with you. Yeah, absolutely. I need to post it to some more people to talk. <laughs> and then once she has we can end the stream. All right, All stay right, tuned because right. we have a health and wellness class at 1.30. Any other questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> thank you all. Well, thank you guys for coming. Thanks right. for... Thank you. We're congested. Oh, but I'm not going with the